Welcome back, everybody, to 79 Alpha 21. I'm an old guy gaming, and this is the Apocalypse Ranger series. In this episode, we are going to start work on the next stage of our horde base build. But before we get started with that, uh, we're going to change a few things up. So the first thing to note is that I have 21 points to spend, um, and I got all of that just from working on the horde base and upgrading uh, the blocks and that sort of thing. And uh, we're pretty much at the point where we have points to burn now. And so what I would like to actually do, because let's see, did I get, yeah, we already got robotics. That was the next thing I think I told you on last in the last episode that I was going to work on. So I already got that maxed out. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to try a couple of different things from what we've been doing. Um, starting with, if we go to Fortitude, I want to give Fisticuffs a try. I haven't really seriously done Fisticuffs in this game, or at least not in a long time. And uh, I just want to see how I feel about it, if it's if it's effective and so forth. One thing I've noticed about the knife is that it really isn't super effective against uh, end-game hordies on insane difficulty. So, you know, if I get even a feral zombie, let alone a greenie, um, this is just, you know, it's not going to take them out real quick. Uh, even it'll take them out over time, but, you know, we need to kill them suckers fast, right? So I think it's time for us to retire the blade as our melee weapon and try fisticuffs out. And if I'm not happy with fisticuffs, then then I'll probably go to a sledgehammer because a sledgehammer is super effective um, even against the in-game zombies with its knockdown effects and that sort of thing. Um, I, the, other, the other melee weapon I haven't really done much at all is the stun baton, but I've seen enough other YouTubers that I watch in Alpha 21 using the stun baton, and I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm just not impressed with it. It's got that really cool, you know, knockback thing, but it doesn't do enough damage. So I'm, I'm watching people like, you know, Glock 9 hitting in-game zombies with that thing like 20 times to kill them. It's like, no, nah, that's not for me. Um, so so the stun baton is just, you know, based upon my observation of other, other players, uh, it's out. I, I'm not even gonna try it. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and take the Kniffy off of here, and I believe I have in here, I actually have a pair of steel knuckles that we found in some loot, so I'm actually happy that I have not sold those off yet. And whilst we're in here, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to try heavy armor and see um, if we can get pretty close to our current movement in the light armor, but with much, much more protection. So that's the other thing we're going to work on. Okay, so now... Um, let's do this. Let's put the fisticuffs in here and we're going to take the mods off of the Kniffy and we're going to put, um, the fortify and grip mod on and the green die. And I think we'll put, I know it doesn't make direct sense to put a grave digger mod on here, but it does increase the stats by doing it. Uh, and the game will let me do it. So we're going to, we're going to do that. And then let's just put these other mods in here. Now, I'm not going to go with a serrated blade because it's just it's a 10% chance, which is pretty low, on a regular attack. And I'll probably be using heavy attacks more than regular attacks. What I do want to put on here, however, is a weighted head mod. And I just happen to have a weighted head mod on this auger here because I could put it on there for extra stats. Um, and we're not even really using the auger. I, I just... I'll try the auger again when I get a level 6 auger and compare it to my pick, but... With all the digging and stuff I did to start the horde base build, it was actually faster. I timed it myself. It's actually faster using the pick than it was the auger, so I decided not to use it. Anyway, um, that's a different story. So let's modify this. We'll put this on here. And uh, the other thing I want to put on here, um, because this, of course, does the sudden slowing effect. I want to put a rad remover on here, but I don't believe I have a rad remover, an extra one that's not being used. So we are going to make one of those, and we can do that. Uh, so let's track this, and looks like, well, I've got a bunch of steel in my inventory, um, you know, because we're getting ready for the build later. So let's grab some glue, mechanicals, and springs, and we'll make ourselves a rad remover for this. Um, I'm going to cancel that dirt, or at least just flip it around. Okay, so that'll be done in 55 uh, seconds, and then... That's what we'll do. Okay, so the other thing that's cool about these is keeping in mind that I do not have any points in lightning hands yet. These are still really fast. 
That's a pretty fast attack speed. Uh, and even the, the power attack is just about as fast as the normal attack. I mean, I it, it's pretty much, to me anyways, is imperceptible, the difference between those two. are very fast. Um, we might put some points into Lightning Hands later on, just because we have points to burn. But for now, I'm pretty happy with just the speed that these already attack. Okay. Um, I'm just going to look at something else here, too. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. You can actually use these to... to harvest animals too so you don't even need a knife at all for that reason so that makes them multi-purpose all right let's put our kniffy in here and um so yeah we're gonna do armor next all right so let's go back to here and we want to go to strength and we're gonna go ahead and max out heavy armor um so that basically gives us uh reduce movement and stamina penalty by 25 percent and improved durability by 200 percent Okay, but we're also going to um, mod these guys up. Uh, let's see, modify to make them, you know, even better in terms of movement speed and make them a little quieter with muffled connectors. Okay, so let's go to here and we're going to remove all of our current armor. Oh, actually, before we do that, notice that if we... If we look at our, um, if we look at our stats, uh, we currently have an armor rating of 55, an explosion resistance rating of 45, we'll just say 45, and a crit resistance of 25%. Okay, um, and then mobility is 97%. I think those are the main things. Unfortunately, the stats don't tell you how stealthy you are, um, so there's not really any way to measure that here uh, but we can see you know what our mobility is and what our resistances are in our rating and so forth okay so just kind of keep those numbers in mind um what we're going to do now is go here and let's remove all of our light armor all of our gear is military but as you can see none uh, only one piece of it is actually max level uh, our boots and then what we're going to do is we're going to put oh you know what we have a um we have a, a SWAT helmet. Yeah, we have a really nice SWAT helmet that we got in um, a quest reward. So, so that's even better. So we're going to use this instead of this. The comparison is, let's see. Yeah, the SWAT helmet, the green SWAT, or sorry, the purple SWAT helmet has 2.3 more ra armor rating than the blue steel helmet. And it's a little more durable too. Okay, so let's wear that. And... Uh, We'll just put the steel helmet in here for sale later on. That's another thing we got to do is we got to go sell some stuff at some point. But we're not going to get to that in this episode. Okay, so uh, let's wear this, 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 and this. I'm going to put this auger back in here. And then we want to take all of the mods off of uh, these guys. And go modify. We want the helmet light, the banded armor plating. This, you know what? I, I don't think I need the water purifier mod on here. We got tons of water. I, I just don't see the point in it. I, I'll hang on to it, but I don't think we need it. So let's just put it in here. What I would like to do, however, is I'd like to put any as many customized fittings and customized. Um, uh, you know, the quiet ones, whatever the hell they're called, on as we can. Okay, so let's modify this. And we'll put that there. Okay. Now, let's uh, take the mods off of the chest piece. And we'll go to this chest piece, modify. And we want to put the banded armor, the bandolier, the advanced muffleds, and the triple armor pocket mod there. All right, next we will go to our arms, modify. Oh, we even have an extra slot there that we can put something in, which is good. Um, Okay, yeah, so banded armor, triple, and advanced muffle connectors, and we'll see if we can make some fittings 
advanced fittings for, for that third slot there, or fourth slot, rather. Okay, let's take these off of the pants and go here. Same thing, muffled uh, or banded pockets, and then we, we have customized fittings there. And then finally on the boots, Okay, so, um, now let's also grab the black dye off of this and put it on, because I just like the black dye. It kind of fits with trying to be a stealth character, too. Now, how effective we are going to be at being stealthy in heavy armor remains to be seen, because obviously heavy armor is not designed for stealth, but we have very high stealth perks so it's still might be you know reasonably effective we won't really know until we start doing it because of the fact that there's no way to to measure it uh, through the stats okay so that's what we look like in our black armor it's too bad the the coat puffer coat clips through but you know whatever Okay, before we look at the stats, though, let's um, let, let's actually try something. If we go to here, remember we have points to burn now. What if we max out pack mule? What does this give us? Three, three, th four, four. Wow, that gives us a lot of slots. Let's go ahead and just max this out because why the hell not? We got the points. Okay, so now with that maxed out, do we actually still need these pocket mods? Let's take a look. Okay, we can take that one off. No, not that. We can take that off. Okay, we're still good. Steel gloves, take the triple off of there. Still good. We haven't lost any slots yet. That's a double. Okay, no loss of slots. And here. Oh, look at that. All right, cool. So with maxed out pack mule, we still have our entire inventory open and we don't need... Yeah, we don't need those at all. Fantastic. Okay, that just opens up more slots for us to put other things in there. Uh, namely, the, um, the, the customized fittings and the muffled connectors. So let's put all this stuff in here. Oh my gosh. We, well, you know, when we sell, we, we'll have a lot of extra mods here that we can put on stuff to make it more valuable. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to put this extra one in here, I suppose. Okay, so what do we need then? We need... Let's just look, look at muffled connectors first. So we need one muffled connector... Two muffled connectors. Two. Right? Let me look again. One there. And one there. Because the rest of them have muffled connectors. Okay, so... Let's track that. So we need plastic. Duct tape. And um, sewing kits. Okay, so let's make two uh, advanced muffled connectors. Just going to cancel that dirt for now. Uh, how long will those take? A couple of minutes. Okay. Now, how many um, fittings, uh, fittings do we need? So let's go back here. Okay, you have fittings. You do not. So there's one. You do not. Two. You have them. You do not. Three. So we need to make three customized fittings mod. Custom fittings mod. Track that. Uh, looks like we're missing leather. And we're also going to need some more duct tape. So let's just grab some cloth. And... Let's make duct tape, and I'm going to have to make some more glue, which I can do later. 
Okay. Now, let's make three of these. And then when those are done, we can go back to making the dirt. I, I, I have a whole bunch of holes by the horde base that we've got to get filled in. Uh, so that's why I'm making all that dirt. In fact, let's grab all of this stuff out of here. Okay, so we're just basically waiting on the muffle connectors and the fittings. We'll get those put on our armor, and then we'll see what our stats are. Actually, while we're waiting for that, uh, we still have seven points to spend. So what do we want to put those in? Um, Let's see here. So perception... We don't care about Spear Master or Quick and perspective, uh, Perceptive because those already deal with Spears. You know what we could do? I mean, we could put some points in Animal Tracker. I just never found that useful. I mean, it's not that it isn't useful. It's just not necessary in this game. We could do Skull Crusher. Okay, so let's keep that one in mind. Um, I don't... Yeah, we don't need Whirlwind because that only applies to Blades, which we're not using anymore. Everything else is maxed out here. What about in Intellect? We got Barter, Adventurer maxed out, Charismatic Nature doesn't matter. Man, there just isn't a whole lot more for us to do. So yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we go to Strength and let's, let's max out Skull Crusher. And I should have, I should have, um, what do I have for a sledge? Do I have a sledge at all? Do, 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 I don't. I thought I had a sledge. All right, well, we'll definitely come across one at some point, I'm sure. Maybe I did have one and I sold it. I don't see it in here. And I don't see it in here. All right. Well, yeah, like I said, we'll come across one. Uh, I probably can't make a... Yeah, I can't even make an iron one. Um, but, you know, it might show up in a in a quest reward or we'll find it in loot. But at least, you know, we have the points to use it now. I could have sworn I had a sledge in here, though. If I do, <laughs> my eyes are not seeing it. And, you know, that's happened to me before. It's right in front of my face. Yet, I don't see it. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, grab the rest of these. All right. We want to go back to the helmet. And we want to put uh, muffled connectors on here. The chest piece needs fittings. The arms need fittings. Oh, we still have room for one more thing on here, too. Okay, we'll come back to that. The pants need muffled and room for one more. And then the boots need fittings. Okay, so we still have... We have a slot here that we could put something and we have a slot here that we could put something. What else might make sense? Everybody's got banded, right? Banded armor, banded armor, banded armor. Banded armor, banded armor. Okay, so we've got all the essentials on there. Um, so I guess the other stuff we could do is we could put, like, some of the weather-based mods. But the thing is, we don't really need them because we have... Uh, I've maxed out well insulated. You will never have the more severe stages of temperature status effects. I mean, I suppose it's theoretically possible that we could still have the milder ones, maybe. Hmm. But I don't even have any of that stuff. I'd have to either get it or make it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, well, I don't think 
the the weather based mods, you know, like the insulated jacket for the snow and that sort of thing, affect the other stats anyways. But we just need to remember that we have an extra slot on the gloves and the legs uh, for later on. Okay, let's take a look at our stats now. Okay, so now we have an armor rating of 77, which is another 25-ish more than what we have with the light armor. We have 68 explosion resistance. I think, wasn't it like 52 or something before? So we've gone up there. We have 35% crit resist. I think before we had thir uh, 25. And... And we have a 92% mobility. That's really good, guys, because I think before we had 97. So we've only lost 5% mobility with a full set of heavy armor. And it's almost, you almost can't tell. I mean, this is certainly fast enough for me to run around in. Uh, plus, I think we have that, um, I think we've read that book that means uh, when we're in combat, we're not encumbered at all by the armor. So there you go. Um, so the only thing really that might and probably won't be as good as before is our stealth. But as far as the, the mobility goes, um, it's good. And the stealth might be fine, too. We won't really know until we get, you know, start getting back into situations where we need to, to use it. So we'll, we'll just see how that goes when the time comes. All right, very good. Um, just out of curiosity, can I make the... Yeah, see, I can't make the insulated liner mod. What about the cooling mod? I can make that. Um, so I guess, I mean, why not? We, we probably will go back to the desert at some point in time. Except for, <laughs> I just burned up all my glue. Um, uh, okay. Well, we need to make more glue anyways. Let's grab some bones here. Is there anything going on in here? Uh, -uh. and I want to go check my water. Looks like the garden's ready to harvest again, too, but I'll worry about that later. I must have recently grabbed that. Are you doing anything? Nope, you're just generating heat. Okay, let's grab, say, three stacks of water and we'll make 30 glue. Oh, our screamer friend's around. Okay, so we're going to make ourselves some glue here. Um, we're going to need some oil. And some mechanical parts. And we've already got the... We've already got the sewing kits. So we just need one more of these. And then we'll make two cooling mesh mods. Very good. Let's go back to here and go to our arms. And we'll put that guy on. That gives us... Um, it doesn't take away from our cold resistance. It just gives us five more. Oh, that gives explosion resistance too. That's nice. I didn't even realize that. Even better. Because you know we're going to blow ourselves up with our grenades on Horde Knight. It just happens. Cool. So we just added two more explosion resist in addition to 10% or 10 more heat resist. I love it. At some point we'll, um, you know, make or obtain the insulator mods and then we can switch those out for... Because we spent a lot of time in the snow now since that's where both of our cities are. But I'm not expecting to have any issues with it though because we have a puffer coat on. And we have maxed out, um, what the hell's it called? Well insulated, so it's probably not going to be an issue no matter what. Very good. All right, guys, I think we have accomplished everything that I wanted to do with points. We still have two points left. I mean, I don't know what the hell to put that in. Let's just put them in lightning hands. Why not? There you go. Okay. So when we get that next point, we'll put it in the third one, and then we'll be 25% faster with a weapon that we're already mega fast with. And, you know, the thing about these is I might not like them. <laughs> I might get into 
you know, start using them, say these kind of suck. Um, or I might think they're the best thing since uh, sliced bread. So we'll see. We shall see. All right, guys, I'm going to get this, the forges uh, topped off and the concrete and all that. And then I'll meet you guys over at the horde base and we'll get started with the next part of the build. All right, guys, we are at the horde base. So um, as you can see, I have completed the towers up to ground level. It, so the next part of the build is going to be, uh, excuse me, building the explosion chambers on top of uh, the four the four towers. Uh, before we get started with that, though, I want to, um, oh crap, I didn't grab the rest of those wood blocks. Uh, or I'm sorry, dirt blocks. I, I just want to fill in some holes here that the board has made. I'm not really concerned about filling the holes like, you know, these really deep ones all the way back up. I just want to mostly cover them this way. Um, oh crap, that's a huge one. Okay, hold on. Let's get you in there and back out. Okay. Um, you know, so I don't follow it in myself, of course. But, you know, once we get the base completely built out, they're not really going to have a reason to dig down because we're going to be above this time instead of down below like we were before. However, I did give um, give it some more thought, and I think that... Is there any more holes out this way? I think we're going to keep those lower... Um, chambers that we used on Horde 70, uh, Horde 70. Yeah. Right. I think Horde 70, uh, there as a fallback. Um, you know, one of the things I can do now because I have, uh, maxed out, uh, parkour and I have impact bracers, I can jump, uh, I can fall off of here all the way down and I don't break a leg. I, I, I take, uh, I get hurt a little bit. I lose some health, but I don't, you know, I can't, Basically, I think it's impossible to break a leg once you have maxed out par parkour. That's what the perk, one of the things the perk does. Um, so all that to say, um, you know, we can still use that as a fallback in case the upper um, chambers fail. But we're, re keep in mind that we have we're going to have four of those. So so all four of them would have to fail before the end of the horde night before we would have to retreat down below. Um, and, you know, maybe it'll work beautifully. Maybe it'll be a complete disaster. I don't know. We won't know until we try it. <laughs> uh, but I'm excited to to give it a try anyways and see how it goes. Okay, so is everything patched up over here, I think? Let's go look and see um, over here. I'm going to eventually do this little nice little leveling out thing all the way around the perimeter of the Horde base. But uh, that's not super high priority right now. That That's more aesthetic stuff that we can take care of later. Uh, yep, yeah, we got some holes here. Let's get that filled in. Okay, I think that covers all the holes. Uh, there's a small a small divot there. But yeah, I think we're good. All right, now. Uh, just to demonstrate, notice I have 200 health. And now I have 164 health. So we lose about 47 health. Uh, no, sorry, 37 health from coming down here. But, um, yeah, I think I'll leave these chambers here. And that way we always have, you know, this as, a, as an optional fallback if we, if we need it. All right, let's go back up to the top and get started with the next part of this build. All righty, so first thing is we're going to we're going to make a a bridge leading across there, and we're going to upgrade it to steel, and I'm also going to upgrade. In fact, I'll probably upgrade this whole entire lining up to steel eventually, but for now, let's just do the ones that are near the bridges. Okay, now the other thing I want to do here is I want to I want to make I think I want to go down three layers of steel. Both to pro, you know, help strengthen it against explosions in the chamber, but also to protect it against like cop spit from the outside. And we need these three blocks to be steel as well. I'm, um, 
almost certainly going to have to get some more forges going too because uh, we're going to need so much steel uh, for this. I wish the vanilla game had even harder material like, you know, a lot of the mods do. You know, like, for example, Darkness Falls. Well, actually, I don't know about Darkness Falls. It probably does too, but um, what's the mod I like to play a lot? What in the hell can I think of it? Undead Legacy. Und <laughs> Undead Legacy, you know, has like titanium, right? And I know uh, a lot of the other ones do too. So, you know what? I think Darkness Falls does have titanium. I'm almost positive that it does. So it'd be nice if the vanilla game had that as well, but it doesn't, so steel is all we get. Okay, let's get this upgraded. Excellent. Okay, we got our next point. Let's put that right on into lightning hands. I like the way I like the way he snaps the uh, uh, the heavy attack. He's just like snaps it. That one's more of a, a uh, like a, a haymaker, and this is just a whap whap whap. Very cool. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so we got that the base of this done, we're, and everything I'm doing on this tower, obviously we're gonna I'm gonna do it on the other three towers, but I, I'll just do this one on, on camera, and the other ones I'll just build off camera because uh, you'll know exactly what we're gonna do. All right, now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to build a chamber here. I don't know why that shows red like that, because it's obviously well supported. Um, and we're going to make this guy five blocks high. And so let's get the corner pieces done first. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. And three, four, five. And three, or two, three, four, five. Five. Okay, let's get these guys upgraded. All right, so that takes care of the corner pieces. Uh, now let's do the walls. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, we got another point, too, by the way. And uh, you know what I think I'm actually going to do? Is I think I'm going to sit on that and wait till we get the third point. And then I think I'm going to max out intellect only because then we don't have to rely upon the nerdy glasses. Uh, we'll still use the nerdy glasses because they also give us faster crafting. Um, but if I happen to take them off and put, say, like the lucky looters on... Um, we still we still get all of the of our points in case I forget to change them back out, which I inevitably inevitably will. Okay, now next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna double line this whole thing. We're gonna double line this son of a beach. So what I wanna do is I wanna get a couple of different stacks of excuse me, uh, wood blocks. And the other thing, two guys, that I think I'm gonna start doing is after we build this one out, I think I'm going to start just making concrete blocks to finish the rest out because uh, we don't need any more XP. <laughs> we just don't. Uh, and, you know, I'm designing these bases to be massive XP farms, but at this point I'm doing it more for proof of concept than out of need. Um, and so it's going to be faster for me just to to already have the concrete blocks because then we just have to upgrade it once to steel. Um but again, like I said, we'll, we won't do that for this first build, but we'll do it for the subsequent builds and I'll do that off camera. All right. Now what I want to do here is I want to go here and we want to go to uh, just plates and we're going to double line all of this to there and we're going to Double line that. Okay, so I think those are all the ones that will use the flat pieces. Now what we want to do is we want to get uh, the corner pieces, which are going to be... Um, we're going to need these two, these right here. Yeah. Okay, so 
put that in there. That one there. That one there. That one there. And I think that's all we're going to need of those types. And then we need these guys here. Okay, that's looking good. And then for the rest of the chamber, we just need the this guy. Okay, and then I just got to get the rotation correct. Cool. Okay, so that completely double lines this explosion chamber with two two layers of steel and we've actually got like a total of four layers of steel on the on the floor. Okay, let's get this stuff upgraded. Excellent. Okay. So that takes care of the explosion chamber itself. This is all we're going to do. We're not going to do anything else down here. Next thing is we're going to come over to here and we're going to make some ladders. All right. So we're going to put... those ladders there. Very good. Okay. Um, we actually need one more here too. Now we're going to make another, um, another layer here. So do that next. Very good. Now, let's take these ladders and um, put them on face. Yep, like that. Very good. Now, we're going to split these blocks up. We're going to go to back to here. Grab the plate corners. Okay, um, and then, oh, you know what? Actually, I screwed something up. Okay, let's pull these back down for a second. Because we need four of these guys here. There we go. Okay, now we can put um, these other ones back. All right, now um, the next thing I want to do is I want just normal plates. Or no, not normal plates. I want these guys again, but... We need to rotate them like so. And actually, I don't want that one there. Okay, that looks good. And then I want normal plates like that. And then we want to come back to our ladders. There we go. Get those in there like so. Okay, we're getting there. Now we're going to take a whole bunch of ladders. And we are going to do this. Very good. Let's um let's add some more to the ladder stack here. And we're going to let's remove that guy for a second so we can 
get up high here. Beautiful. Copy rotation, put you back in there. All righty. Um, now, next thing we're going to do is let's, um, let's get this all upgraded next. We're only going to go to concrete on this thing. I may eventually make it, um, steel. We're actually going to make these steel. Uh, but I don't have a lot of steel at the moment. So, in fact, how much do I have? Um... Yeah, we have less than a stack left. So this whole cage up here is going to be concrete for now, but eventually I'll probably also upgrade it to steel. All right. The last uh, thing we're going to do is we are going to make four iron hatches. All right, while we're waiting for those hatches, let's um put that block there. And I want to put some ladders here. Um yeah, we'll go four down. We want these to be steel because of cop spit, of course, and vulture spit. Okay, now, oh, I guess we still we need to wait for these to be done. But so for the first one, we're going to put this here like so. And then, as you can imagine, we'll put the second one up here, inverted. So that it flaps down and then when we close them uh, we only have one hole here that a vulture could potentially come through and uh, we'll be very well protected against vultures but the reason i'm doing these hatches if it isn't already obvious is because we still need to you know be able to get in and out of the place so with this being a hatch i can still jump up over it to get in here and plus, it, it acts as a little bit more of a platform to kind of clear the top there when we are jumping out of the place. Okay, we got the second um, hatch here, so let's do an on face. And we want, yeah, we want it just like that. There we go. So now we're very well protected from buzzards. When we need to get out, we get out, get back in. Just kind of pop up over the top of that, and we're good to go. And I will do the same thing, of course, on this side. All right, guys. Uh, aside from upgrading this upper chamber eventually to steel, uh, when I have, you know, the resources to do so, I do not at this point. That's pretty much it. Um, so what we'll do is uh, we're going to do the same thing on the other three towers. And... What I'll, what I'll do is I'll put a ladder, um, you know, on, uh, on this tower. So when, when we're ready to move to the next tower yet, when this one starts taking a beating, we can just jump over to the next one and, and it'll have an, an opening exactly like this that we'll get in. And then we'll, you know, we spend a little bit of time on that side, do the same thing. And then it's basically a wash, rinse, repeat situation. So now that uh, you see how it's all going to come together. The rest is up to me to to get it done, but I, I've got to make a butt ton more steel because <laughs> we used a huge amount of steel on this build, but it's gonna we're gonna need it. I mean, you guys have seen how nasty um, these hordes are, and uh, we're gonna need every bit of this you know double layered steel that we put in here, and it's still gonna get beat up pretty good. But the whole point, of course, of having four of these is. We don't have to spend the whole night in just this one and have it have the absolute shit beat out of it. You know, we can move around between the four towers and try and distribute the damage, uh, you know, across the four. And if all four of them, like I said, if all four of them actually fail, well, then 
we just drop down here. We jump up here, and then we fight the Horde for the rest of the night, uh, just like we did on Horde 70. So it should work pretty good. At least that's the theory. Um, and, you know, if uh, we also have, you know, because we have maxed out pain tolerance, we cannot get stunned. So if we do need to, you know, run back up during the Horde night, um, all we have to do is just, you know, use our M60 to clear anybody out that's coming after us, which they will. And if we take a few hits along the way, it's not a big deal. But most likely, if we jump all the way down to the bottom, we're staying down there for the rest of the Horde Night. That's only if all four of the towers up above fail. Keep in mind, too, that this build so far does not have any trap assistance at all whatsoever. But we do have maxed out robotics. The problem is, is I can't make, um, I can't make the turrets. Right, so we're going to need, you know, eventually we'll come across the magazines, I'm assuming the magazines to make those, or maybe we'll find them in loot. I don't even think I have any turrets back at the base. Uh, we do have we do have these turrets, though, too, so we could set those up with power. We could do something maybe with electric fences, but I want to kind of see how, how it does first without any traps at all. And then if I feel like it's going to need some trap assistance, you know, then we'll come up with... Um, you know, some, some help in that, in that way. All right. So pop up there. Let's get these other hatches in place here. There you go. <laughs> All right. I'm excited to see how well this is going to work. Um, so with that being said, I think I'm going to let you guys go here and I'm going to spend the rest of uh, day 76 and probably day 77 getting the other three towers built. If I get that done and we have time, I'll bring you back uh, before Horde 77 and we'll go do a POI or something. If not, then most likely in the next episode will be the beginning of Horde 77 and you guys will have a chance to see how all this actually works. With that being said, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and share the video. And we'll catch y'all in the next episode. See ya.